It's a good opportunity to boast. Uh, where does everything good begin? Uh, let, let's always speak the truth, even though it might sound immodest. So, oni tabari ajana ku nuga kama sa pari nkonfri kaku sa pe eri lari nkon la lekbele la le ibi lo de timbere. What I said just now. <laughs> Is as usual, everything great begins from Ogun State. If you don't believe me, well, take Afrobeat, for instance. Afrobeat, fella, it started here. It all began here. He might have uh, sort of disseminated it in Lagos in the United States, but Afrobeat began here. So, why are we surprised that the first African drum festival begins in Ogun State? It's normal. We're used to it. We don't make song and dance about it. One thing which I need to um, complete, a story which was begun by the Alafi. It's a true story, I assure you. A rhythm is all, very often. We don't understand the nuances, the capabilities of rhythm. And rhythm, of course, is enchanting. When the Oluri, who was the high, seven high priestess of Shango, began her chant on the occasion described by the Alafi. You see, I've taken a group of young students, pupils, in fact, from Abeokuta Grammar School, a class under a certain program called uh, Super Teachers. From anywhere and uh, induct them into aspects of your own specialization. In this case, of course, culture, literature, etc. So I took them along with me. It was the height of the dry season. I took them, some of them, you know, were very badly indoctrinated. They believed that anything to do with tradition was paganism, was diabolical, was fetishism, negative, and I had to cure them of that kind of belief. When I mentioned, when I was lecturing them, talking to them, for instance, and I mentioned the Yoruba deities, Shangonio, Bogunio, uh, Oyanio, only, ah, those things, no. Those are for people, you know, satanic believers. So I said, all right, come with me. Let me introduce you to the origins of some of our culture. So I took them to the Alpin. And he, as usual, gave a massive cultural uh, display to welcome us. And then the Oluri began the incantations of for Shango. This thing happened exactly as I'm describing it. It was a marvelous sunny day. Suddenly, from a long distance on the horizon, we saw a dark cloud. I mean, Okorok Abiyasi. It began as just a small cloud. And then it came nearer, and the wind, it had been totally still. The wind began. And then it increased in speed. And Olo returned to Kabiyasi, she said, shaking Dawaduro. And Kabiyasi said, hmm, well, 
So she continued. And this cloud came nearer and nearer, and the wind became fiercer, more violent. I was very worried for my school pupils. I've taken them from Abelkuta, their parents, and their schools. So I was looking at them all the time. The next thing I knew, the um, tent under which they were sheltering simply flew off. I became very worried for their safety. Again, Kabiasi and Uluri exchanged looks. And Kabiasi again shrugged. That wind really became violent. To cut a long story short, the next thing I knew, because I rushed to the rescue of those children, the next thing I knew was the end bit of Kabiasi's Agbada disappearing into the Afi. So I herded the children to the bus and took after him. I got there and said, Ah, Kabiasi, I drove them, I only a joke over. I said to him, I knew you were a boxer, but I didn't know you were also a sprinter. Thank you very much, Kabiasi. Kabiasi.